fifth season in South America starts with a long trip across five countries. Winnie too managed to survive five months in storage in Uruguay, and so he spent a few weeks in Paraguay before continuing west. After crossing the searingly hot Argentinian Chaco, we go over the Paso de Hama into Chile. Afterwards, Highway 5 takes us all the way to Arica and the border with Peru. The bridge is gone and uh, yeah, we can't get across. Obviously the river is high. This is it. We see if we can find another way around it. Our plan is to drive all the way up to Ecuador and Colombia, but there has been a lot of recent unrest in several South American countries, which turned violent. In Ecuador, the government stopped subsidizing fuel, which meant the prices almost doubled overnight. Thousands of indigenous people rebelled in Quito and Guayaquil, and the government was forced to back down and reinstate the subsidies. A week or so later, Bolivia had an election where the results were manipulated by President Morales who, after violent protests, had to step down. Almost at the same time, the government in Chile raised bus and metro prices in the capital, Santiago, and millions of people went on the streets to protest. Claudia and Uva are back in Independencia. House-sitting is not always an easy job. They have to move all the tree branches that have been cut down from the wood and take them down to the small pond. The branches are used to shore up the sides. It's really hot in Independencia right now, so all the tough work has to be done before breakfast. Mia, huh? what do they do here? On the early morning, it's already so action, eh? Aber Claudia sieht sexy mit ihren Gummistiefeln aus. <lacht> Hast du schon Schweißfüße da drin bei der Hitze? Okay. Hast du schon Schweißfüße da drin bei der Hitze in deinen Gummistiefeln? Das mache ich dann zehn, wenn ich bin so weit ist. So viel besser. Pia, Werner and Olaf are also in Independencia right now, and we all enjoy the wonderful potluck dinner together. Lola and Mia are always howling when Claudia and Uva leave to go shopping. Originally, we had only planned to stay for two or three nights at Hasta La Pasta, but the temperatures soared to over 40 degrees in the shade. It was way too hot. Fortunately, there is a pool where we can all cool down, and the birds also had their own pools. Heaven. The heat 
tough for the birds to feed their chicks. This one made the right decision to build its nest in the shade under the roof of the shower bar. After 11 relaxing days at Asta La Pasta, we move on to Asuncion for two nights and then across the border into Argentina. The Argentinian Chaco is one of the hottest places in South America. Thunderstorms and heavy rains in the afternoons are typical for this time of the year, and we go through a storm on our way to Formosa. The next day is the longest driving day we have ever done in South America so far, 560 kilometers in total. to Paso Jama again. This time we're doing it from the other way, from Puma Marca to San Pedro de Atacama. We are heading towards the switchbacks that we couldn't see last time in the fog. Today it should be clear. And then off to Salinas Grandes, a big salt lake that we passed through last time as well. Switchbacks. He's getting a bit hot, me too. I had to put the fan on already. It smells a little. Hopefully, we're okay. Halfway up now. And now we're getting to the real switchbacks. say at 4,000 meters it's really tough to breathe I can feel myself getting a little dizzy but Helen is waiting for me so I'm okay Salinas Grandes is the third largest salt flat in the world and the largest in Argentina. It covers an area of over 500 square kilometers, some 3,400 meters above sea level. The former lake that dried up in the Holocene era is now a crust of salt up to half a meter thick. 
So you're driving straight across the Salah on this nice tarmac road. It's really warm up here. And we just walked out in t-shirts and shorts. Traditional tools such as axes, shovels and spades are used to open rectangular pools 50 centimeters deep to extract the salt crystal. This is how they harvest the salt. A pool produces around two and a half tons of salt a year. They fill it with water and then they scrape the salt off. Once the extracted salt has been dried by the sun, it is piled into mounds and packed into 50 kilo sacks. The price of a tonne of unrefined salt is $18, and it takes around a day and a half to get that amount. The salt is sold in Argentina's southern provinces, where the kilo price is $1.50. The little ones, yeah, yeah, the little ones. Hmm. This is not guns climb. Looks like we're heading into some rain here. We're just below 4,000 meters, high up on the plateau. Nice driving here. We're at the border and it's cappuccino time, but the altitude didn't actually boil the water. Helen is reboiling some water now. Because our cappuccino is not cold enough, uh, hot enough. <laughs> How can that be? I'm actually hungry and I'm looking forward to our apple strudels from Casa Rica in Asuncion. They are slightly squashed by now, but they taste absolutely fantastic. Hopefully the cappuccino will improve. Helen is adding more water. Now it's boiling. We're having a coffee. Mm -hmm. We have a coffee break now. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. We got up very late this morning, eleven-ish. Mm -hmm. um, we should have started earlier, but for some reason, we were still sleeping. Mm. But that's okay. We're having a good trip. Nine thirty, something like this. We just got across the borders without any problems. Very nice offices everywhere. I think they're happy to have tourists because there are unrest in Chile and uh, it shows that they treat people really nicely. Not that we ever had a problem on this border anyway. But it was fast and good. We could keep our ham and we could keep our cheese. That's all we want. We've got two flamingos here. What are they called? St. James flamingos or so? Those are the big ones. They're right next to the road. Oops. This one just had a shit. <laughs> I would say more PSI than the penguins. <laughs> oh, that's the incoming tar. <laughs> the other one is pooping now, it shits right at the, the one behind. What a life. Just sifting through the water in high altitude all day. They're beautiful now, really, really beautiful. Oh, 
Look at that. Uh-huh. Stretching his wings. Mm -hmm. It's like my yoga position <laughs> on one leg. Mm -hmm. Arms up. Yep, that's us. Hello. Special blood that never, that doesn't need to acclimatize. Just sitting in here driving is, is actually not too bad. So now we're, this is the highest, 4828. Looks like we're going down. Looks like we're going down again. I'm a little bit blinded by the sun on my side here. Hardly any vegetation's left up here. It's almost like being on the moon. This is the other motorhome that was ahead of us. I don't know if they're stopping for the night, but uh, we are definitely not stopping here. 4,800 meters um, are not really good for your body. Kilometer 72. Here they are, the Alma radio antennas. I'm on full zoom and it's, the haze is reflecting them. It's, a, it's one of mankind's most, what is it, scientific arrangements. They can see past or up to the rim of the universe with these antennas. It's incredible. I wonder what they're actually eating. There's hardly anything growing here. fantastic day ends with an amazing sunset. We spend two nights just outside of San Pedro de Atacama in the desert. It's really quiet and peaceful. Another beautiful sunset. And the full moon's rising on the other side. Beautiful. like shark fins, isn't it? Yep. This is just outside of San Pedro de Atacama. Beautiful stretch of road. copper mine in South America. I'm not quite sure it might even be in the world. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, we couldn't get on the tour again because of the unrest in Chile. It's too dangerous according to the tourist information right now. They're suspended for the whole week. They might come back on, but we're going on. There's no point in waiting. One day we're going to finally see it. It's the second time we're trying. Last time we couldn't do it either. Never mind. It's a giant hole. I think it's like three kilometers long and I don't know, 1.5 kilometers wide or something. It's, it's huge. In our next video, we are traveling on the Pan-American Highway in Peru to the beautiful colonial town of Arequipa.